Hi, so uh, I've been looking at these uh, TS100 soldering irons. They've been getting very good reviews for quite a long time now. Uh, and well, last week uh, Amazon threw me a flash, one of their flash sale things, and uh, the same smart version of this, which is already a little bit cheaper, uh, but it's exactly the same thing. Uh, was on sale for 40 bucks, and the thing usually I think it's 65 for 65, something like that. So I picked the thing up. Uh, now this thing is fully temperature controlled, uh, pretty decent quality uh, soldering iron. It runs off of uh, DC 12 to 24 volts. It comes with uh, an AC adapter. Uh, it's basically just your standard laptop adapter. Um, and the, uh, it's a 19 volt, but, uh, this thing is a 65 watt, uh, heating element. Uh, these are interchangeable. They, they come as one piece, so when the tip, I guess, wears out, you buy a whole new heating element, but luckily they're pretty cheap. I found them on eBay for, like, six to eight bucks, uh, and they have a bunch of different tips. But I think you can see that's, that's your standard, uh, cutoff cone or cut off cylinder which is a nice general purpose uh, tip. Uh, I'm going to have to get some different ones. I'll probably get a big chisel and a little tiny cone for doing more detail work but this is a good one to ship with as a general uh, first tip. The um, way this thing works is you uh, go and it just slides together like that, makes contacts generally going to be holding it like this, so I'm going to want to angle the tip appropriately. And then the, uh, there's, this is a little bit of a pain in the butt. I guess you wouldn't necessarily have to tighten that set screw, but I think in general you probably want to. Alright, um, I've got power on this thing now, and uh, let's just plug it in. Scene smart. It's got a little animation there that says you gotta push that button. Press. Okay, I press. And immediately starts heating up. Um, you can see it heating there. Uh, that little animation is getting a little bit cut off. Now it says it's it's up to temperature. This is the first time I'm putting anything on here. We'll see how this goes. Look at that. Wait a sec. She's heated up in a hurry. Um, all right. Uh, I think you. Let's see. Yeah, if you hold this thing down, then you can. That was holding on the right right hand button. I think you just wait, and it. There you go. I did 3D print this uh, little case for it. It doesn't come with any cases, so this has got clips for the. Uh, for this to go into, and you could put it in here pretty quickly, you know, like immediately after turning it off because uh, it does hold the tip away from anything, so I guess that's kind of handy. Um, and it's got room for two more spare tips, which is probably about all I'm going to get anyway. And then it's got a place for the uh, for this to go. I just found this design on Thingiverse. Um, took a little while to get it printed properly, but uh, hinges are pretty good. I definitely wanted to have something to put this in because uh, this is the sort of thing that just gets tossed into a bag for me, and I'm a little nervous about this thing's durability. I mean, it seems durable enough for what it is, but I uh, wouldn't want to toss it in the bag and then chuck things on top of it. That's one of the problems that I'm already seeing with the soldering iron is uh, there's not a lot of, there's that big power supply hanging in the middle of the cable. There's only like three feet of cable at the end of it and uh, it wants to fall to the ground because my AC outlet is too far away. I've got here the control board for uh, my three, for a 3D printer. It's not. This is about the 80th thing that went wrong with this uh, printer is that those, the, I don't know if you can see that, but the uh, 
the connector in here at, on the, at the end of a really long print, the print failed and uh, it was because this uh, this uh, the, the connector was is just not up to the amount of current. So rather than just re I was originally going to replace the connector, and I realized if it, if it died once, it's going to die again because that connector is not good enough for this purpose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this out and replace it with... I just want to see how much... Yeah, this is feeling a little underpowered. Wow, that's... yeah, that's not really melting the whole thing very well here. Yeah, it's it's getting there. It's claiming that it's at 300C the whole time, but boy, I don't believe it. It's definitely not going to take the place of my uh, of a normal soldering station when I'm at home. It's uh, it's definitely a travel and outdoor whatever tool, but that's kind of what I expected. So, let's see. Yeah, I'm not using red wire here because, hey, this is what I got. This is stripped out of an old AC extension cord. Man, is that sticky. Let me try running the heat up on this thing a little bit. Let's go 350. I'm going to let it get up to temperature here, 350. Of course, I don't believe that it got up to 350 that fast. But anyway, let's see. Let's see how this goes. Because that was really, the iron was sticking to it. It was like it really didn't have enough, enough juice to do the business there. That's a little better. That feels better. Yeah, it works. Clearly a little short on heat capacity, but it's not bad. Let's see. I have to come in here. Well, let me tip, get... You know what they say, the bigger the cloud, the better the job. Let's put a bunch of solder on here so that we can uh, do exactly what they tell you never to do and uh, build a mechanical connection out of solder. You gotta come in the other way because there's a mounting hole right there. Mm. It's alright. Oh god. I'm trying to expedite this for the video and normally I'd build I'd have so get something to hold that in place for me. Get it hot. There we go. Well, that was that seemed pretty decent. I got some of these 60 amp connectors here. That should uh, definitely be more of the right tool for the job than what they shipped with this thing. Let's get some solder inside of there, inside the cup there. I think it's all spinny. I didn't think it was supposed to spin. That's enough. And put the two together. Hey, that's not bad. Okay, now I've got uh, I've got this hooked up to a 12 volt power supply. I was going to try a uh, actual like 12 volt like car battery or something like that, but. Uh, don't have the bits for it right now. So, the 12 volt, we'll see how this goes. It's definitely not where anywhere near as fast to heat up. I'm guessing that it's going to also be a little hard to deliver a lot of heat. 
solder melting hot. We'll see. Asking it to heat this up as fast as maybe asking it a bit much. Well, it seems like it's doing it. There, now it's flowing. not the most excellent source of heat, but, you know, it's run at 12 volts. It's, uh, not bad. Okay. Alright. Now we get some heat shrink on there. See what we do here. Reheating these it is slow. Gets the job done, but boy, it's not the. That seems a little cold. Flip this around. Get the other side hot. I want a little bit more solder in there than that. It's high amperage and a lot of stress on this thing. Could be. Okay, it's almost flowed. There we go. Well, I think it gets the job done. This is one of the real questions I had was how would how would it do at 12, 12 volts? And it seems like it's doing all right. It's able to hold temperature. I've seen people selling this thing for like a hundred dollars, and I really wouldn't pay a hundred dollars for it. Um, absolutely worth forty. Uh, the usual price of 60 to $70. I think uh, as a small components, you know, if, if I was doing surface mount repair or uh, just regular electronic soldering, I think it'd be okay. Uh, again, it's not, uh, it's not a replacement for a desk unit. Um, I guess... It's nice that it's uh, it's small. It's easy to store. Uh, if you have very limited space, it might be a good option. If all you ever do is uh, relatively small stuff and maybe occasionally doing something a little larger, um, not too bad. So that's that's that.